Hey guys, Zuljin here and welcome back to another episode of Ragnarok Evolved. How are y'all doing today? I've been playing a lot uh, on the server and kind of getting uh, some live streaming done and stuff. Mostly because what I've been doing is just breeding and I haven't really had... Uh, much results, just a whole lot of a whole lot of trial and error. But uh, I I wanted to show y'all some progress before I got too far out of hand because uh, I mean I have been I have been moving quite along and I recently just got some mutations that I wanted to show y'all as well as the setup. So this is just uh, this is just kind of an outer shell for the base right here. This is um this is a design that I got well. The, the start of a design that I got from a fellow on the internet by the name of Fizz. Uh, he has an ARC YouTube building channel, and uh, I've been trying to learn a lot about building because of my profession on the SKRP server as a stonemason. And um, I've been playing around with some more designs, and I've been getting really heavily into building lately. And uh, and the building with S Plus has always been kind of fun, but things like these angles are challenges. And I really wanted to see how to pull off some angles, so I started doing a research, and I found the design that I wanted to try out. And this was actually quite difficult to get these angles. I had to use fence foundations and get them going and I'm not really uh, unbelievably happy with the intersections that the gates took right here but um, for the most part it's a, it's a fun design and I think it's going to make a great base layer. Naturally I'm going to add a second maybe even a third layer and I'm going to do some different extensions off of these plus all of these walls right now are, uh, are only temporary. These are going to be uh, some wood panels that are painted and with windows and different colors I'm going to use glass for some of the windows it's gonna look it's gonna look bananas once I'm finished with it but um, we'll we'll be doing more building on live streams later uh, I've been using my um, my aloe to do most of my uh, my killing and my dota curious and my beaver just to do a little bit of harvesting what's neat about this guy is I, I really didn't realize this because the other day I said our gathering rates was so ridiculous that it really didn't like they didn't really value the dota curious um, and honestly the level of the dota curious really doesn't um, matter for what I do with it but uh, what I had is this s plus table in here and you'll see that right outside I have things like these little rocks that I can just bust up. And the table is close enough for me to just pull resources in. And the great thing about the table uh, is that you can craft the basic um, stone stuff. So these foundations, I can craft them from in the table, which is nice because it holds uh, basically unlimited resources. Well, not unlimited, but a lot more than my own person can hold, which... which really really increases the uh the effectiveness of the building like it just goes by much much faster so let me take my dota cures out and show you kind of how this goes um my, the the same goes with the beaver and i'm starving i got megalania eggs for days let me just eat a couple of them we'll get into the building just uh well not the building but they're breeding in just a little bit uh i can almost use this for melee instead Oh, also, there was a recent patch that went through that changed all sorts of stuff. Like, we have new sabers and, and all sorts of stuff. But I think the coolest thing that I thought about the patch is that these guys sh could never attack before from the water. Well, I thought they could. I thought all animals could attack from under the water now, but apparently it's not true because I can't attack from the water. Uh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to right click or something in here? No, I don't think so. I think that still stops you. Oh! Oh! <gasps> I'm right clicking it. It's doing it. Well, it's about time, game. Yay! The Dota Curious is not absolutely gimping the water anymore. That's wonderful. Well, uh, you learn something new every day. Anyway, so these rocks don't really respawn, I think, due to the distance that I am from the, um, the build. But just to give you an example, I'm going to go ahead and get a few thousand stone here. Now, my Dota Curious can't move at all, right? Well, it can without me on it, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Watch this. There we go. Now we're not moving. Now you're not moving anywhere, are you? Okay, so uh, pretty easy now. We can go into the build, into the S plus table, go to pool resources, select stone... And it is going to be 
Doom, 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 doom. 5,200 stone. Pull. Done. We pulled 5,200 stone. And the Dota Cure should be coming right on back. Now, naturally, you can set them not to come back. But uh, for the most part, I think that is a really, really good deal. Um, it's going to help me craft a lot more. Now, the foundation setup... I'm going to go ahead and gamma up here. I know it got late pretty fast on this. But um, the, uh, the foundation setup that I got here was quite tedious. This is too deep foundations all the way across and the reason i wanted to do that is well i didn't have enough space to do what i wanted to do level with one foundations um so i needed to go two and they're stackable uh but the stacking is i don't know the mechanic kind of sucks like sometimes they just glitch out and they don't want to place correctly it's it was kind of um I really didn't like it at all. <laughs> it was pretty aggravating, to tell you the truth. But anyway, okay. I got my two following the aloe. It should be good. Let's get on our little buddy here and go up. This is my. This was my primary mount for a, a good little while. The stats on I've been leveling. This is one of my first. Um, I think this was my first tame, actually. Uh, the, my first Megalania tame. And while it's pretty good, 9,400 health. I uh, got melee up to about 529, movement 157. I am about to switch it out. Right now, my breeders, um, I'm going mainly for color, which I've gotten a couple of color variations. Um, but the biggest thing that I've been excited about for um, the mutations as well is I'm really starting to get into some high stats while I'm going through all of this. Like, the levels of my Megalania are increasing, like, drastically. I've got some 241s and 242 base levels, and the stats on them are starting to get astronomical. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Now, the Megalania by far isn't, like, the most dangerous creature in Ark for PvE. Like, it's not something I would go take on an aloe pack with, although it's getting there, so it should be pretty interesting. Let's see. I should be... Sometimes the Megalania is hard to figure out exactly where you're at. There we go. Sometimes it could be a little bit dizzying. The thing is, when you start traveling up on something, when you go in the first person, sometimes you aren't facing uh, the way that the head is faced. Sometimes you're facing backwards. So naturally, if I press forward while I'm facing the tail, it's going to start doing all kind of weird turny stuff, you know. So that's, that's kind of why it can get disorienting. But at any rate, I like it because you can do all sorts of stuff on it. Like, I think you could fire crossbows and stuff. Anyway. This is this is the mutations that I got so far, you guys. Uh, we have a really nice, like, golden yellow stripe that I've got on a 219. Um, if you go underneath Show Ancestors, it does show that we have the mutation on the patrilineal side. And I've got this, like, orange copper one, too. Let me see if I could gamma 4 to make this a little bit more apparent. Well, that really didn't, that really didn't do much, did it? But... Uh, you can see it's a uh, it's a little copper look. I'll show y'all when it gets closer to to daylight as well. Um, aside from that, those are my two studs. No, wait. Yes, those are my two studs. The copper is a male, and the gold is a male. So I'm about to start using uh, the gold as a uh, as a breeder mate as a breeder male for this group of females that I got on the wall. So uh, I don't have a whole taming pin and stuff yet because I've just been trying to go for colors and I haven't been really organized. But mostly what I'm doing here is just subdividing a few of them and trying to filter out some of the lower levels. See, these are all base levels that you see. No training at all has been going on uh, uh, any of them. Now I have a couple of 217s in there and even a 214. Uh, but I also have like a 235, a 238... Uh, 241. <laughs> They're starting to get pretty big up there, so kind of impressive. And well, for my for for my goals at least, maybe not to you, but I'm I'm pretty impressed with them. Um, the base the base highest difficulty on this is is pretty much vanilla. It's 150. Uh, so for those kind of levels coming out of breeding, I'm I'm really happy with. Uh, being that Zul has been tra has been trained up and is only 254, knowing that I have some base 241s and 242s and stuff are are pretty crazy. So I've gotten this uh this this is the highest level stud I have. Unfortunately, it's only 223, but it's getting up there. Um, the 223 though has some pretty good stats on it. I don't really like the melee damage on it, but the other stats are pretty good. 778 weight and 4200 health is nothing to sneeze at for a male. But watch this, you guys. Watch this. There's a couple of females up here. Uh, let's see. 
the one up there. I named it. That's right. A 5K health female. Which is pretty darn good, considering like I have spent a ton of points on a few of them to get that kind. This is a 3,000 hit point. Uh, Zul has 9,400 hit points, and I've put a lot of points into that. Uh, my copper male has 3,400. So you can see where this is going. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, and I have one that's a melee, a melee and movement female. Now, this one I'm going to have to go up here to show you. Let's see. Let's just take weight up here, and I will show you what it looks like if I can... I can wake, make my way around to it. Some of these surfaces are pretty hard for the Megalania to get started climbing. There we go. Uh, but once I get around to it, it's not that bad. Ah, there we go. Um, okay, so melee and movement female. Let, let's see if I can. Uh, let's see if I can show you the stats on that. Sweet. So 3,400 hit points, which is pretty darn low. But look at the melee base stat. 600 melee is nuts uh the weight on this thing is 760 which is not the highest i have but it's an incredible weight stat um i mean it is a level 242 though and the movement speed is 147.3 which is higher than almost all of my other ones this one's 130 this one is 138 so that's one of the highest movement speeds uh that i've gotten so far let me just collect a few of these eggs here for food, I've been living on eggs, straight up, you guys. Like, everything I do, I've been living on eggs. Uh, so, it's it's pretty cool. Okay, so, wait, you're going to stay. And I'm naming them right now. It's not, I'm, I'm just naming them by their, their <laughs> whatever their stats are that I'm going for. But wait, is not a breeder. He's just one of my, uh, my regular ones that I use for wait. I've been busting his stats up, buffing his stats up. And now I'm at, like, 16, 14 weight, which is pretty good for all my trips down there. Um, pretty much living without flowers. Every once in a while, I use a flower for utility, but for the most part, all of my travel is done on Megalanias, and it's actually been fun. All right, so what we want is we we still we still definitely want some color mutations, and what I'm doing right here is all of these are set to ignore group whistles, and they're set to wander. And because they're attached onto a wall, they never actually wander off. So the only thing that I have to do with this Megalania right here is behavior, um, enable wandering, and I'm just going to go up. And when I get off him, they're all going to mate. All right, guys. It took me a little while to get him parked in there, but it's happening. There's a couple of them that weren't ready to mate uh, because of a little bit of, um, of mating that I did earlier and now that I mixed up uh, a few of the new ones with the old ones and stuff like that there is a little bit of breeding so the next time I I actually do this it should be all of them but the middle male can reach all of the sides there and what you want to do is I set this thing up right here now I don't have any fuel in it but I do have some refertilizer here and I'm gonna activate it so it used the last one I only use one at a time here so I don't forget but any of the eggs that happen to fall and fall into any of the crevices are automatically picked up uh, by the dodo at any rate to get the fertilizer to, to refuel this stuff I, uh, I went and took the liberty of picking up a few beetles um, the place that I got the beetles if you look out into the distance from the waterfall, I could gamma down now. If you look into the distance there, you see that uh, that black lava rock over there? All in that area, uh, that's me on the map right there. All in that area that you see along the northern coast, uh, you just go in inland a little bit once you start seeing the black before the snow, and the beetles are everywhere. You can find a few beetles pretty easy. And with a breeding setup like this, the amount of crap that you get is unreal. You just feed them the feces, and after a little while, ta-da, you get tons of fertilizer. So that's been working out pretty well. I've been leveling up weight on them. I'll put them back in. How much you got for me? A few, too. The, the small feces, unfortunately, don't do a whole... What the hell did I just do there? We're going to have to fix that up. Pick up. Was this the... Yep. Apparently I got a little bit of uh, that too. Okay. We can close that one up. And come back here. Alright. 
and this will just add to the fertilizer. Sooner or later, it will get perpetual. It's going to take a little while, but basically, I need to be able to create 24 of these per day to keep this thing running 24-7. Alright, so most of them had already bred, so I only have two eggs to hatch for you guys, but I figured I would show you the process. Even though, if you got a weak stomach, I'm sorry, but baby killing happens in breeding. It just, it just happens to be a thing. So, there's only one time of day that I can't really do this at, um, which is very, very close to night. Uh, throughout the night, but for the most part, it's it's warm enough with just four torches here for Megalonias, and I check them pretty much the same way anytime. This one came out as a 216. Um, I go to show ancestors and see if there's mutations. Now, there is a mutation here. I'm not too sure what it is, but I think it's the color. It's just hard to tell from the torches. So, come on, little guy. Come on out and let's see what daddy got. Let's see. So this is a keeper. You're not gonna. Ha you're not gonna have to see baby death on this one. <laughs> you're not gonna have to see baby death on this one. We just really want to see what the actual color scheme is uh, that it got. Even if it's a color mutation, it may just be a stat mutation. But no, it's a color mutation. So uh, we got the gold, which it could possibly be from the already the the mutation that we already had from the gold daddy. And this one's stats are not too impressive. Nothing here uh, really stands out as something that I would want to keep. So we may not keep it. Let's check the other one here. Uh, we'll go ahead and behavior, disable wandering. I'm not too sure how uh, breeding with a mutation uh, already, if it just gets passed down automatically or what. But that was the gold stripes that we had before. Now, let's do the second one. Maybe you guys can educate me on that. Because I don't know a whole lot about breeding. I really don't. I just know uh, how to make them start humping and stuff and get things doing. Okay, this is a 241. This is good stuff. This is a very, very big female, uh, which we can change out pretty quick. Let's go to show ancestors. And it looks like that one mutation uh, is carried over too. So, I'm thinking that it is because that we have a mutation uh, that is breeding uh out of the mail so all of them should have at least one mutation so we'll be able to kill these off uh if they don't have the kind of stats that i want although the 241 will not be killed off although the, the 216 i believe will unfortunately all right so this guy has this is pretty regular colors from what i can tell but the mutation did get passed down of some sort 4600 health 391 melee. The stats on this aren't that impressive as well. Stamina is 1440. I mean, the health is pretty good. I mean, for another breeder female, it's definitely better than some of the other ones that we got, like the 214 up there and the 224 to 217. We're probably going to keep that one. Uh, this is a female. Actually, you know what? No, this is a male as well. I didn't even realize that. Uh, so the male, yeah, definitely has to die, unfortunately, you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure this one is fed. We got some meat on it. It'll be in the trough in no time. It's already at 2.7%. We're going to go ahead and make sure this behavior is... Um, I'm sorry. We got to unclaim. That's what we got to do. Options. Unclaim. So this one is gone. And we're gonna take care of it with the other Megalani. It's it's kind of nice. It's kind of natural for um, the um, isn't it the the moms and dads to um, to kind of take care of the young, <laughs> the 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 runts. Like some <laughs> I don't know if it's true for Megalani or not, but for the most part, it's fine. And the babies get all nervous and stuff. It's okay, little one. It's okay, little one. All right, we're not gonna kill you. You <laughs> you're. A you're important to the to the to the whole chain of things here, but I think next time, guys, that I do a video for an update, I'll probably show you guys maybe my little breeding setup. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research and figure out a nice little breeding setup to do, but that is gonna be it for today. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, give me some dap on that like button to show you support. I'd love your comments to let me know about your breeding experience and what I should be doing. Uh, to make sure I get the best stats and best colors. Like I said, right now, I'm pretty much going just for colors and levels, kind of just um, narrowing down the inbreeding, so to speak, and I think I've got it right. But anyway, I always welcome your support. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you don't already follow 
my streams, you should. I'm live almost every day at like 7 p.m., 6 p.m. Central on um, on twitch.tv slash Zul'jin. And I upload all the VODs to my second YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Zul'jin TV. Uh, I'd really like to see you there. Come on, meet me. We do SKRP, and I've been doing some uh, Ragnarok streams anyway. So come hang out, guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Zul'jin signing off, and we'll see you next time.